In February 1952, a princess from the British royal family came to Africa, precisely Kenya, on a vacation with her husband. She left as a queen, a monarch ruler that would not only rule her ancestry land but her colonies. Her name? Queen Elizabeth. After reigning for 70 years, she joined her ancestors and the world mourns her death. The case is a little bit different on the continent of Africa, where most of her former colonies is, as the news of her death is met with mixed reactions. Queen Elizabeth's first official visit to Africa started in Uganda in 1954 and the last is Uganda in 2007. She visited more than 20 African countries. In this picture, Queen Elizabeth dances to a Kwame Nkrumah, Ghana's president, during her visit in 1961. The dance to a high life tune, composed specially for the occasion, called Welcome Your Majesty. This was at the height of Cold War uncertainty. This moment was seen as significant in ensuring Ghana remained affiliated to Britain and not the USSR. In 1999, the Queen visited Ghana for the second time under the leadership of former President Jerry John Rawlings. When she visited Nigeria in 1956, the aged told us the celebrations was like no other. Again in 2003, after Nigeria had been readmitted into the Commonwealth in 1999, she was nicknamed, which means to come with rain, because her visit saw the best rainy season of the previous 10 years. The Queen and Nelson Mandela were said to have a close friendship. The Queen signed letters to President Mandela with your sincere friend, Elizabeth and apparently referred to him as Nelson, Why it is said that he called her simply Elizabeth in a break from the royal protocol. Ethiopia in 1965 Zimbabwe in 1991 While most parts of the world mourns the Queen, some African countries and individuals have either criticized Africans who mourn her death or shown it with the remembrance of the Queen's impact on the continent. In South Africa, the opposition party Economic Freedom Fighters said, and I quote, We do not mourn the death of Queen Elizabeth because, to us, her death is a reminder of a tragic period in this country and Africa's history, citing that the British monarch had a history of brutal repression while attempting to colonize the continent. Nigeria, Omo Yeleshuwure forced the Nigerian government for directing that the flag should be flown at half-mast for Queen Elizabeth, while Uju Anya, a university professor in the US, had earlier expressed her wish to the Queen just before her death. Articles have stated reasons for her reactions to be the side the monarch took during the Nigeria Civil War. During that period, the UK government, led by Harold Wilson, supplied vast amounts of arms and ammunition towards the Nigerian government, with which she lost half of her relatives. It was the British royal family that sanctioned the actions of Sisi Rhodes, who plundered this country, Zimbabwe and Zambia that is more from the South African EFF. While Fati Nyati, a Zimbabwe historian, said our colonization was about the looting of resources, minerals, and source of hostility. Other general accusations made by Africans include stealing of gems from the continent, slavery, and colonization. Despite a number of criticism of the Queen and her reign, she is loved and her death is mourned by many African countries and individuals. 
after directing that the Nigerian flag should be flown at half mast. In an official tribute, Nigeria's president Muhammadu Bari had declared that the history of Nigeria would be incomplete without a chapter on Queen Elizabeth. Likewise, Nigerian communities in the UK have even announced different patterns of family attires, known locally as Ashwebi, at the high price of between 50 and 100 pounds per yard. News is also being circulated that Yorubas in the UK intend to perform oral rituals in honor of the Queen. Topia Labi, a gospel artist, sang a song eulogizing her, and Naira Mali got a tattoo of the Queen. The South African President Siri Ramaphosa sent condolences to the United Kingdom government and people. Her Majesty was an extraordinary and world renowned public figure who lived a remarkable life, he said. The Nelson Mandela Foundation also consoled the British family following the death of Queen Elizabeth II, saying Mandela and the Queen would phone each other frequently using their first names with each other as a sign of mutual respect as well as affection. A memorial service was held in Zimbabwe for Queen Elizabeth in Harare on the 15th of this month. Ghana President Akufuado ordered that all flags should be flown at half-mast in honor of the late Queen. While it's okay to blame Queen Elizabeth for many of the things our critics said, I would like to remove some things which include that she was the architect of colonization. She came into power in 1952 when African countries were under colonization. And by 1957, she granted the Gold Coast its independence. That is the first African country to gain independence. She later granted all other countries in her colonies their independence, one after the other. Attaching slavery to her will either be as a result of her family history or activities of colonization. It's true she did many bad things, but she shouldn't undermine her good deeds. Because of all the colonizers, she was the first to grant independence to African countries, and she made the system, she didn't create it. It's okay to blame her on her personal deeds while she lived, or when occasion calls for it, but not okay to mar her demise with profanity. Even our ancestors themselves did many bad things, many bad things that I will leave to the next video, and we still celebrate them anyways.